Uh, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls. I'm going to try and make a video that uh, I can actually just upload straight off the camera and not have to spend hours of, upon hours editing the damn thing. So I'll try and make this not too wordy. But uh, my past two projects have been getting the fast 92 intake manifold put on that I got all the way back last, uh, it was a Black Friday sale directly from Wilson. I think they were selling them for like 660 or something like that. It was uh, too good to pass up, so I went ahead and bought one of those. It may not stay on here forever because there's still plans to eventually uh, experiment with a LSA supercharger on this car, but that's besides the point. We've got it on here at least temporarily. I didn't film actually putting the thing in the car because it would have sounded like a uh, Cat Williams comedy special, honestly. It's a little bit of a bugger to get this intake in compared to an LS6 manifold. Um, so it's very tight. It's actually substantially larger than a regular LS1, LS6 intake manifold. So some of the sticking points that uh, you know you might get hung up on a little bit is um, Oh geez. Well, first of all, I kind of set myself up for some additional challenges because I put in a aftermarket four corner steam vent system. I don't know if you can see the black braided hose, but it's a very nice kit um, made by Faster Racing LLC, I believe it is, with two S's in the Faster. Uh, that They make a kit that is specific to the Fast 92 and 102 intake manifolds so when you're doing that if you put in this kit uh, with the four corner steam vent you got to get all that set up and get those fittings and fittings torqued um, at the proper angles to get this intake manifold to slide slide back in underneath the cowl and not hit stuff um, that are related to that four corner so if you're uh, you know, don't care about the four corner steam vent thing. I know there's all sorts of thoughts and topics, controversies, whatever you want to call it about need it or don't need it. If you don't run a four corner steam kit, uh, this manifold should go in substantially easier. Um, let's see. The routing is slightly different for your PCV setup. Um, well, in my case, I'm running a CTSV valley cover. Um, so there's no external PCV valve. Um, I made the switch to an LS2 throttle body. Um, I really don't see the point in going to a fast intake manifold if you're going to stay with the stock 78 millimeter um, throttle body. You can do that if you would like, but like I said, I just don't see the reason. Uh, you have an extra adapter plate and you're choked off at the throttle body. Um, the LS2 throttle bodies, they do not have a fresh air supply to the valve cover. So I had to get a little bit, uh, I had to get a little bit crafty with that. Um, So I put, I found a grommet that fits the hole where the IAT sensor used to be. And uh, this is a 90 degree nipple off of a PCV valve um, that I used. And so now this is my fresh air supply going over to the passenger valve cover for that PCV system. Um, the fast intake manifold is not exactly designed to retain the uh, purge valves and purge solenoids, uh, the emission stuff coming from the fuel tank. I elected to go ahead and keep it. I don't, I don't uh, have that stuff turned off, so you will get a check engine light if you take that stuff off. Um, if you're going to go ahead and fit that stuff in here like I did, the hard plastic line that comes off of here that goes into the original LS manifold, 
that hard plastic line won't go on there. You'll end up breaking it or kinking it. So I switched that line over to some uh, 5 16 fuel line. Other than that, you can kind of nest this uh, the valves and stuff down in there and the wire harnesses will reach in their respective locations. I'm torquing this guy. They use Allen screws instead of bolts uh, coming from Wilson. I highly recommend that you use a torque wrench on these plastic intake manifolds. No matter how long you've been working on stuff, it's still a good idea. Torquing the two Allen screws underneath a cowl is not very fun. I have Allen sockets, but they're even at that, they're too tall. And I didn't want to modify them, so I went ahead and um, cut down a piece out of an Allen wrench and then just used a 5 millimeter socket so I could make it as tall as I wanted or as short as I wanted in this case. And I was able to torque everything following the proper sequence. Um, here you can see the other, this is the starting point to the four corner steam vent right here. Comes around and then basically goes all the way around the engine. Um, adapter harnesses. So I made the switch to the 85 millimeter Z06 mass airflow sensor. This has built in IAT. Um, slightly less of a restriction as well compared to the early C5 mass airflows. Haltec air bridge. Um, you have to use adapter harnesses for all of this stuff to, to make it reach and fit accordingly. So this would be the connector for the factory IAT. Um, so that gets, like I said, that gets moved directly over to the mass airflow sensor. Uh, and the wire harness for the throttle body needs an adapter. So this would be the original connector for the factory LS1 throttle body that would have the connector right here. All these adapters are readily available. You can buy them all over the place. LS2, in, uh, LS2 throttle bodies have internal TPS, so it's one connector. This is another part of the adapter harness right here that uh, makes this guy be able to work. Since I have an early C5, you can see that I had to put the uh, sense tube into the bellows for the Haltech air bridge. This is a short bellows compared to what's normally on a C5, so you only have a little bit of room to fit this guy in there, but that seems to be working from what I can tell so far. Um, if you're going to do any kind of intake work on a C5, I recommend that you cut back the plastic tubing for the HVAC controls. Um, uh, a lot of times it ends up getting broken and then just putting like a one foot long piece of uh, uh, vacuum hose on there so that you can have like a service loop in there. makes it really easy to work on. A lot of guys get a little bit carried away with wanting to change their oil pressure sensor. Um, me personally, I still have the original one in this car. It, uh, it works just fine and it's not that hard to get these intake manifolds in and out if you did ever need to service that. Some of the other, some of the other changes that I made, um, I know I'm getting a little bit wordy, but I went ahead and made the switch to the Holly uh, LS valve covers. I don't run fuel rail covers and uh, you know I don't think these are too awful eye popping but they still clean up the engine bay quite a bit because you get rid of the brackets. This particular model of valve cover uses LS3 coils instead of LS1 coils. I don't know if they make these that accept um, LS1 coils because the bolt spacing is different so that's something to keep in mind. But like I said, I really do think it cleans up the engine bay quite a bit if you don't like to run fuel rail covers. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I'm forgetting. Um, but I'm pretty sure that just, oh, uh, one other thing just popped into my mind. It is possible to fit the later uh, 
C5 mass airflow sensor, the 85 millimeter one, I believe is the dimension. It is possible to get that mass airflow sensor into a Blackwing air filter that uh, was originally for an early car. It, it slips right up over the mass airflow sensor just fine and it's not that hard on it at all. It's not like it's gonna tear open or anything like that. So I just had this thing cleaned, uh, working on it this, this uh, early spring, late winter. And I've only driven it about 50 miles and you can see, man, I just, it's amazing how much sandy, dirty crap gets inside a C5 engine base. That's even with the hood seal. See the whole car's quite dirty. I need to get her washed up, but I've been in the middle of uh, tuning this thing, so. Um, another point on the Holly valve covers. I've got this side capped. I hope my fresh air is on that side over there. If you wanted to, you could merge these two together, but uh, I just don't think it's necessary. Any uh, LS-based engine that has a high-mounted alternator hanging off the left side, you're gonna have to use the provided adapter bracket to move the first coil back away from the alternator on the driver's side. Not a big deal. Uh, with the Corvette support, I did have to notch it for this spark plug wire uh, so that it had plenty of clearance. Again, that wasn't a big deal to me. Like I've said in hundreds of my videos, um, well, maybe I don't even have hundreds of videos, but in my videos, anytime you work on stuff that is aftermarket, don't expect it to just go right on. There's always some adversities to, to overcome. Um, if I've missed anything and you guys have any questions on this installation, um, you know, go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll answer them as best as I can. But like I said, I didn't, I didn't film a lot of this because it was kind of obnoxious. And as you know, people that make some of these videos, sometimes you just don't feel like it. Just not in the mood, not in the zone. Um, so there's always some of that going on. This car's been kind of tedious at times. But uh, if you've made it through all this rambling, um, I am taking my first leap into HP tuners and uh, basically tuning a PCM from scratch that has a 2002 Z06 operating system on it. Car's cam swapped. Um, different MAF, different throttle body, different intake, the headers. Uh, there's lots of things that would absolutely require this thing to be tuned. So it's been kind of a fun learning experience. I haven't filmed any of that either because boy, that would be super tedious. And I'm just not well versed enough to be trying to teach anybody how to use HP tuners yet. Maybe someday, but we shall see. So that's all I got for now. Like I said, if you have any questions, you guys know where to put them.